What's up guys? We are back in the garage today working on this blonde six drawer dresser for one of my clients and she wants it in such a fun color so let's just get right into it. So I'm going to start off by testing the piece for any lead because older pieces will sometimes um, have toxic lead based paints or finishes on them before it was banned in the 80s. So you take a swab, you get it wet with some water and then you rub it around on the surface for about 30 seconds and then if it turns pink then that means there's lead present and if it stays nice and yellow then you're safe. So check out how I almost ruined her dresser. Thank god it didn't fall because that would have been a tough one and also very embarrassing to explain. So now I'm just going to clean the piece with some simple green cleaner and a scrub brush before I rinse it off with a wet towel. Oh, I forgot to mention also, she brought in this white nightstand that we're also going to do to match her dresser. So now I'm just going to scuff sand her pieces with 220 just to make it nice and smooth and then also to make it easier for the primer to, um, for the primer to grip onto later. So now we need to address the base. Um, so we're going to be building her a new one, so we just have to take the old one off. But as you can see, only the front piece um, comes off with screws, and then the sides are just um, one solid piece. So I'm just going to use a speed square to mark off the line that needs to be cut off and then I use a piece of tape as a guide. We're using a pole saw today. This is great for if you don't mind using a little bit of elbow grease and then it's also just a lot less chaotic than like, you know, a power tool to use. So Kendall's doing the first side. He's so fast. His clip is only sped up five times and mine in the next clip is sped up 10 times. It was hard, man. <laughs> Not how you saw it. It's the pole saw, not the cross saw. Fun or work? <laughs> Both. <laughs> All right, so after my saw. workout, we actually did pull out the jigsaw for the backboard because we were afraid to rip it up with the pull saw. Next, 
Next, I am mixing up some water and wood filler to really help smooth out the cracking finish on the top. I like to paint it on in the opposite direction of the grain so that the mixture catches um, a little bit better on the surface. And I like to do this to almost every top that I paint on because that's the surface that catches the most light and that's also where any imperfections will be the most visible. So when that all dries, just sand it down smooth with the 220, but be careful not to over sand. And this is what my top looked like after. See all those white tiger stripes? You would have been able to see all of that if I didn't do this. So after that, we just went in and filled some more spots that we missed. I don't usually show clips of the small touch-up parts, but in reality, these small detailed parts of the job actually take up the most time. Like look, it's already nighttime and I'm finally ready to prime. I'm using Kills Primer today, it's my favorite primer, it's so easy, no cleanup, it's oil-based, it's awesome. But when it dries, it'll dry kind of rough, so be sure to knock that texture off with some light sanding. And oh my gosh, you guys, I just reached 1,000 subscribers. This is such a big milestone for me, and it's so crazy to think that there's a thousand of you guys who are interested in the work I do. It really inspires me to keep going, so thank you all for being here with me. We're moving on to the paint now, and just check out this color. I get so excited when I get to work with colors like this. If you're spraying like I am, just make sure that you strain your paints or else um, your sprayer could get clogged and then it could like spit chunks out. And man, if you've never used a sprayer before, you have to try it. It is so satisfying to be able to produce such a smooth finish and it's so much faster than doing it by hand. I'm using the Home Right gun today. It's a beginner friendly gun that gives you an awesome result. I'm not sponsored by Home Right or anything, but I just really love this gun. I've always found it hard to spray the insides of things, but one thing that really helped me was to use that little um, circle function because that shoots further than the normal up and down or the side to side spray. So it's time to build the bases, but first we have to take the miter saw out of hibernation, so Kendall is helping me do that. Oh, that's the biggest it'll open. Hey man. 
And Kendall will always find an excuse to play with knives, so here he is sharpening my pencil for me. So to build my base, I'm going to be using 1x3s for the apron and then 2x2s for the legs. So I'm going to cut one long one to go at the front and then two to go on the sides, taking into account the width of the legs. So this is actually the DIY wife base. So if you go onto her channel, she has an awesome tutorial on it if you want to do the same thing. We had a cute little visitor fly into the shop and I was trying to live out my Disney princess fantasies. But he had it's other plans. Like beacons. How long it's beacons? Oh, there you go. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, bye. Oh, so nice. <laughs> Great. Okay, back to work. I'm cutting the rest of the pieces for my base, and then I'm gonna drill some pocket holes into them. I just got this Craig 520 jig and I was wow. using a smaller uh, Miles Craft jig for my other bases but this one has a built-in clamp so it makes it um, a lot easier to assemble and disassemble for doing repeated pocket holes. But make sure that you position your piece of wood right or else you'll end up with something like this. All the holes are drilled, it's time to attach everything with pocket screws. These are specially designed screws that have a fatter head to kind of clamp the two pieces together and they're also supposed to be less prone to wood splitting. I sometimes like to put wax on the screws also to help them glide in a little bit better. And after that's all done, it's time for the hardware. I am so excited for you to see what my client chose, so just hang on because you'll see them in a second. And if you want an in-depth explanation of how I measure and do my hardware holes, I do have a video where I go more into detail and I'll put a little card for you at the top here. So the bases are all done and all that's left to do is attach them to the piece. We like to clamp them together so they don't move and then using an impact driver will put the pocket screws in. A driver is a lot more powerful than using a drill which is what I used to use um, so it's a lot easier on your wrist than using a drill. Um, sometimes I'm afraid that it's too powerful even which is why I'm just barely tapping the trigger. But after I put in this last screw we are all done. We've transformed this outdated blonde dresser with a failing finish into such a stunning piece of furniture. I love the earthy tones with the exposed wood and the nightstand matches so well even though they weren't from the same set. 
I had so much fun doing this makeover and I hope you enjoyed watching it. All of my tools and products are listed down below in case you wanted to do something similar. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.